baptize me in the river, wash all my sins away. Baptize me in the river, let there be no delay. Gather round all... Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning. My name is Pastor Davidson. I'm the shepherd here at St. John Lutheran Church in Athens. And for those of you that are joining us, I just wanted to say welcome. We're excited to have you with us today. Now, normally I'd be pouring out all the announcements of all the ins and outs of things that are going on here at St. John. And we've just got too much stuff coming up. So I'll be putting up a uh, separate video here in the next week with all the ins and outs of things that are coming up from confirmation, from reopening the church, from communion, uh, just a lot of things that are coming up with our study in the Psalms. We're really looking forward to a lot of things that are coming up. Uh, so I'll put out a separate video with all the announcements and all the ins and outs of what is to come. But that being said, today we are going to be using Divine Service Setting 1, and we're going to be taking a look in Matthew 13 again this Sunday. There's a lot to chew on as we continue to ask questions of the scriptures and grow in our spiritual lives. That being said, we begin with our divine service. But before we get going, I'd like to start with a word of prayer. This comes from Martin Luther. Let us pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body, and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. We begin this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in the glories of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Normally in our worship environment, this is our opportunity to share the peace, or in the last few weeks we've given an air high five, but just know the collective saints call you to say, the peace of the Lord be with you now and always. Amen. Our introit this morning is a great word of the Lord. It comes to us from Psalm 103. This is Psalm 103, verses 6 through 13. Hear the word of the Lord. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay to us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he does remove our transgressions from us. As the Father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows his compassion to those who fear him. Amen. We continue our service now with our Kyrie, Lord, have mercy. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. 
For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. We continue now with our hymn of praise. It's our Gloria in a Chelsea's. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord continue to walk and be with you now and always. Amen. The text today it comes to us from Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 through 30. Hear the word of the Lord. He put on another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven can be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, when the weeds appeared also, and the servants of the master of the house came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have weeds? And he said to them, An enemy has done this. So the servants said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he said, No. Lest in the gathering the weeds you root up, the wheat along with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, gather the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. This is the gospel of the Lord. Before we get into the text today, let's have a word of prayer. Blessed Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I thank you today for gathering us together in spirit and in truth to hear your word. I ask that you would guide us, grow us. Send your little words of faith into our lives on a daily basis to strengthen us as we grow into the image of your Son, Jesus Christ. Allow us to live not in the death, but in the resurrection. Allow the old things to fall away and show us the new mercies that come from your hand. I ask that my words would be yours. That your spirit of truth would grow within each and every one of us. Guide us, Heavenly Father, today. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of the hearts gathered be focused on you and you alone, O Lord, and be pleasing in your sight. And in Jesus' name, all God's people said, Amen and Amen. What seeds are you sowing? Like, what, what are the little things that you're doing in your life to grow your faith? And more importantly, to grow the faith of those around you. Like, if we had to dissect your life, like, like ninth grade biology, remember when you got, like, the frog, and you had to cut it up into little pieces, and, and you had to open the whole thing up and put little, like, toothpicks with labels on it? Like, if we looked at your life, if we dissected your daily life, where's Jesus? Like, what seeds are in there? What little things are you doing to grow your faith and to grow the faith of others? Like, what are you doing to make more and better disciples? In your daily life. And I don't just mean be nice to people. Yes, that's part of it. Kindness, yes. However, but are you telling them about Jesus? Are you growing in your faith in that process? Or are you still a spiritual infant? Scared to say anything? Are you willing to get your hands dirty? Get in there and, and start labeling things and seeing where you've fallen short of the glory of God and where God is growing within you so that you can continue to flourish? What seeds... Are you dropping? What little things are you doing? You see, too often we want the harvest, but we don't want to do the work. We want to see all the, the beautiful blessings of God, but we don't want to drop the little seeds and nurture those little seeds and take care of those little seeds. Put our time in those seeds, put our money in those seeds, put our energy in those seeds to grow Christ's church, to preach the gospel. We don't want to do all those things. We just want the good stuff. 
Give me Jesus. Well, there's a little bit of work that goes into that. You got to read the book. You got to support the church. You got to do what Jesus asks of you. Go and do likewise. Jesus tells Peter, you go feed my sheep. Like it takes spiritual maturity in dropping those seeds. And today we're going to dissect some of this. We're going to ask ourselves, what little things are we doing? Because the culture, when they see the church, they don't see the little things that we're doing. I'm sure when the culture looked at God and taking a handful of dirt and breathing into it and creating man, the culture thinks, oh, that's just some weird story. When in reality, that's faith being created. That, that's creation itself being created. That's God doing something amazing. But they don't see the little seed that God just took a handful of dirt and made man. I'm sure the Egyptian empire, when they saw that old man Moses walking in with his stick, thought, oh, great. Yeah, he's really going to, they didn't think too much of that seed that God sowed in the person of Moses. They probably laughed until that old man showed him the power of God. And all of a sudden the Egyptians failed. But that started with a little seed of faith. I'm sure when Goliath saw that little boy, David, walking in, the kid couldn't even put on his father's armor. He couldn't even come in. All he could carry with him was a sling and a handful of stones. They probably laughed and mocked him. We're the real warriors of your tribe, O Israel. <laughs> but they didn't see the seed that God was planting in the person of David with a hand full of stones. It's amazing what God can do with something so small and create the kingdom of God. You know, I, I wonder, like, did the people who saw the birth of Jesus, did the Roman Empire, like, like they saw something. They didn't know what it was, but they probably didn't realize that it was going to come through an infant and it was going to be found in a stable. And it's this seed of God planting his very son into our world in flesh. And the world mocked it, tried to stop it. And even God shows his glory through the heavenly host to see this seed being planted into the world to be grown into the kingdom, into God-made flesh. I'm sure the world didn't look at the apostles as being God's work, doing something simple. Oh, there's an old tax collector and some old filthy fisherman. Oh, look, there's that zealot. I bet you he's going to start a fight again. They didn't realize that God was using them as seeds to start a kingdom movement. I'm sure that crowd, when that little boy walked in with some fish and a couple of loaves of bread, probably mocked and laughed. Because they didn't see what God was going to do with something small to create a kingdom movement so that the gospel could be preached. Too often in our lives, we don't count the blessings of the little things that God gives us. And more so, the things that God has planned for us to do with them. This idea of sowing a seed. And I'm not just talking about money. This isn't one of those, uh, all the church wants is your money sermons. Uh, you guys know, top 10%, that's that. I'm talking about your heart here. Like the little things that God has given you that have moved you into a kingdom movement. Through the word that is preached and proclaimed. What it means to feel and know and trust the forgiveness of sins. And if you don't hear it today, God loves you. Let me throw some seeds at you. You are forgiven. You are a part of the family of God. Yes, you are. There's some seeds. But too often we just don't see what those seeds are like. And today in Matthew's text, Matthew 13, we see the seeds being dropped. He says this, and this is Matthew 13, verses 24 through 30. He says, He put another parable before them, this group that was gathered, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in the field. Like I just told you a second, and this is an important point. Write this down. God sows good seeds. When you're walking with God, you will have those little seeds that are put into your mind. They become to your mouth, and they become your actions. 
and you look around, there are seeds. Wherever you're at right now watching this, look around. There is a good seed that God has given you. Now, it might not look good. <laughs> you know that old beater that's parked out front? It doesn't drive too great. Well, guess what? You have one. You're still in the top 1% of the world considered rich because you even have it in your driveway. Well, the car's not working. Well, you can hear me preach, right? You have your hearing. That's a little seed. Listening can be one of the greatest gifts we have. I know there's a few of you that are talkers. I, trust me, I know you. <laughs> that can be one of the greatest gifts, the gifts of Gab. Just ask St. Peter. Having those little seeds around you. God sows good seeds. The problem is a lot of times when we have good seeds, we don't do anything with them. We just like to consume them. Oh, that looks good. That looks good. You know, it's kind of like Adam and Eve with, with the fruit, like, oh, it's pleasing to my eye. You know, we want those good things. But it says this in the text. This is verse 25. But while his men were sleeping, the enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. You see, we have all these seeds and we consume them and we consume them and we consume them until we become spiritually fat. And I don't know if any of you have ever seen kids, but when they're hungry, the best thing you can do is just give them milk. Because after you give them enough milk, guess what happens? They get milk drunk. And what do they do? You see, we consume and we consume and we consume and we consume all the things around us until we just get spiritually fat. It's the same thing with the church. Like we, we, we learn scripture, we learn, we learn, we learn, we memorize, but we don't use. We don't give. We don't sow more seeds. We're too busy collecting them for ourselves. And as Paul says... We've got to get off the spiritual milk and move towards spiritual meat. We have to grow in our faith because when we're stuck sleeping, when we're spiritually fat, that's when the devil comes in. Sin, death, and the devil, to use Lutheran terminology. And we ask God, keep away the weeds. <laughs> I don't want to just be spiritually fat. I want to sit and I want to learn, but I want to grow by doing. Go and do likewise. As Jesus told Peter, you go feed my sheep. He says this, and this is uh, verse 26. So when the plants came up and bore grain, the weeds appeared also. Obviously, you were asleep. We were asleep. We are sinners. We fall short. And the servants of the masters of the house came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Does it have any weeds? Like, when we don't see instant gratification, well, God, Pastor, I hear you saying God makes good seeds and I'm using them and I'm doing it and we don't see instant gratification, the first thing we do is blame God. Be still and know. Give it some time and some prayer. Nowhere did Jesus say, I will answer your prayer the way you want it immediately. That's not how this works. He's working behind the scenes. Likewise, the Holy Spirit operates with words that are beyond our comprehension. God is at work. His word does not return void, is what the scriptures say. But also his words are not like ours. If we think we've got it figured out, God laughs at that. It actually says that. The wisdom of God is folly to man. But instead, what we need to ask ourselves is, are we blaming God or do we just need to give it some time? Give it some prayer. Put in the work. The seed has been sowed. Maybe it's time for us to get our nail-pierced hands dirty like Jesus. But instead, we're too quick to blame God because we didn't get instant results. When we know ourselves that we're not doing what we should do. The things that we've done, the things that we've left undone, that thing that we read earlier in the service from 1 John 1. We fall short, yet we blame God for not giving results. You know, it's like that story I read a while back. There was this, this thief, right? And he's on the roof of this house trying to break in and he falls through the skylight and he falls through the skylight above the kitchen and he falls on a kitchen knife. What does he do? He sues the homeowner. Like, you, you, you've got to be kidding me, right? Like, you're doing the wrong thing and you're blaming someone else. Don't blame God, the keeper of the house, the master of the house. Like, you're the one. Instead of complaining about the little things, now this is important, write this down. Instead of complaining about the little things, 
thank God for what you do have. Because we've all fallen short. We've all been thieves. Thank God you still have your life. Thank God you still have your breath. But more importantly, thank God Jesus still calls you his own. Thank God for the little things. Thank God for allowing you to use those little things. Even if you don't see it, take inventory. Open up that frog from ninth grade biology. Use those little things to grow the kingdom. And thank God in the process for doing it. And all of a sudden... The things that you thought were so horrible become the greatest blessings. You start to say thank you to God for everything. Your whole world changes. It will change your life. It will change in the bigger picture. You will see the harvest because you've been putting in the work with your thanksgivings. Continue to move forward. Don't allow sin, death, and the devil to get in the way. It even says it here. How then does it that it has weeds? And he said to them, the enemy has done this. In those moments where we feel like we're not getting the harvest that we want and we're waiting and we're waiting and we're working and our hands are dirty and we're in the dirt and we're doing our best to give thanks to God. Here's the words that Jesus gives us to pray. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Remember that prayer, the Lord's prayer? Lord, give us this day our daily bread, the little things. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one, is what it says in the Greek. Don't let us blame everybody else. Don't let the devil even get in our minds, but allow us to thank you for the little blessings, the little seeds that you drop so that we have blessings to drop to someone else. The smallest act of kindness can change somebody else's day. The smallest act of kindness, the smallest seed of gospel grace that you can give can change somebody's life, but more so, it can change someone's eternity. You are an eternity giver. Think about that. You can give the seed of eternity to someone else. One act of kindness. One act of patience. One act of the fruits of the spirit that you can give to someone else. Can give eternity to someone else. Now, if you want to know about power and what God can do, the greatest miracle God ever worked, more than the Egyptians, more than David, more than any of that stuff I talked about, was eternity that he gave freely on the cross. He sows this gift. Now, is the world going to fall apart around us? Absolutely. There is chaos. We all, we all know this all too well. But we're still given those seeds to invest in someone else, to invest in his church, to invest in the proclamation of the gospel, to invest in patience and kindness and love towards one another. And we start to learn this as he says this in verse 29 and following. But he so nests in the gathering of the weeds, root up the weed along with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the harvest time, I will tell the reapers, gather the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. You see, let's be honest about it. There were two sinners on the side of Jesus at the cross. One was a seed and one was a weed. To the weed, we know what happened. It was burned. But to the seed, to you and to me and to the ones who are hearing my voice and to the ones that have not yet heard you that will hear you this week, Jesus says to you, today you will be with me in my kingdom so that you can give eternity to someone else, so that you can give that seed of forgiveness to someone else. 
May that God of grace continue to use you as you dissect your life to give thanks to the little things and to give that blessing to someone else to continue to grow you into his image. May he walk with you now and always. And in Jesus' name, all God's people said, amen and amen. We continue our service now with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, and he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From hence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Today we come before the Lord with many prayers on our hearts and on our minds. Church, let us pray. Blessed Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Today, there are many who grieve and many who mourn. And I ask that you would bring your hand of comfort and your hand of joy amidst the sorrow. Continue to guide us through these chaotic times. Heavenly Father, there are many who are sick, and I ask you to bring your hand of healing according to your will be with doctors and nurses entrusted with their care. Heavenly Father, there are many who are struggling to find seeds to sow. And I ask that you would pour out your hand of provision and abundance. Heavenly Father, for our congregation, continue to bind us up in the preaching and the proclamation of the good news. Strengthen us in our seed throwing. Allow us to continue to get our hands dirty in the lives of the people around us, to nurture the faith that you've given us to give to others. Allow us to continue to be eternity givers. Lord, guide us in our community in these darkened times. Be a light unto our feet. Bind our congregation together in unity and love and peace as we continue to work together for the growth of your kingdom. Guide us through your Son on the cross and the resurrected tomb. Be with us now and always. And in Jesus' name, all God's people said, Amen and Amen. Usually now we collect our tithes and our offerings to the Lord when we pass the plates. Obviously, we can't do that. As I mentioned in the sermon about sowing seeds, part of our Christian living is giving. You know, the word says top 10%. We give the same in all relationships that matter to us. And the same is with our Lord Jesus Christ. I ask that you would continue to be faithful and fruitful givers to remember God in all things. The proclamation of his gospel and his church must continue. If you're a technology person, check out the tithe.ly app. St. John Lutheran Church is on there. That's a way of giving. Uh, if you're a check person, don't hesitate. Stop by the office. We're open from Monday through Friday from 10 until 2, or you can drop it off in the mail. Uh, it's St. John Lutheran Church, 451 Lila Lane in Athens, Texas. Uh, there's other, some, also some other ways of giving. Uh, please don't hesitate to contact the office during office hours, uh, and they can set you up on those different ways of doing it. So I ask you to continue to be fruitful givers. As the Lord says, trust me in these things. Test me in these things. We continue now with the words that our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You know, it's one of those interesting times when I'm not able to be with my people, where I realize how much I miss you guys. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place in which your glory dwells. I look forward for the opportunity to gather with you all again. While we gather in spirit and in truth now online, 
I'm so excited to, to be able to put out the video this week about all the things that are coming up. So that being said, as the whole people of God, let us continue with the singing of our common doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, up of ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Receive now the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen and amen. Go forth in that gospel truth. Have a great week, everyone.